Cinema 5D at NAB 2016 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. Tilta, arm your camera. Artlist, inspiring music for your films. Blackmagic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. And Atomos. Hi, this is Sebastian from Cinema 5D and I'm here with Larry Thorpe from Canon. Larry, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about the improvements to the uh, Canon Siege Rainer Mark II. Um, you are, uh, I would say, uh, I would consider you like a technical mastermind when it comes to uh, cinema camera technology. Uh, I mean, you're highly respected in the industry and thanks to you we have the C Canon C300 Mark II which is uh, currently the flagship cinema camera from Canon uh, offering a remarkable image quality and low light sensitivity. Um, there has been some debate regarding the dynamic range of yes. the Canon C300 Mark II. Yes. Uh, partly I would say it's also my <laughs> fault uh, stirring up the debate. Um, you advertised the C300 Mark II with a dynamic range of 15 stops and uh, there are many people who also told us that um, indeed the dynamic range of the C300 Mark II is very impressive and uh, it goes up to 15 stops of dynamic range. Other people told us who are more picky about this, including myself, uh, found that the dynamic range is a bit lower than the ARRI Alexa, which is advertised at 14 stops. So there is a kind of uh, discussion about this topic. Um, considering the high resolution of the uh, C300 Mark II, um, it's clear that there is more noise than the, in the ARRI Alexa sensor that is uh, only, I think, 2.7K. Um, but uh, since, since uh, our evaluation and since the discussion started, you have also come up with some improvements to the C300 Mark II. So can you tell us a little bit about what you did in terms of uh, yes. improving the sensor now? Yes. First point is the difficulty that the industry has been having with the specification is that when we moved from the 12 stops of the C300 to the 15, it was one stop up and two stops down. Now those two stops down put you way down. You're at 0.34 millivolt relative to 700 millivolts reference height. So you're down in the noise, but the signal there. And in post-production, people have very successfully lifted that out. Certain people have been shooting movies in moody, dark scenes, have been very impressed. But it takes post-production. From those experiences, and many others with television people, however, we recognize not everybody needs that depth of uh, dynamic range for television shooting. So we have introduced in the C300 now another log curve, we call it Canon Log 3. And Canon Log 3 eases up, we go down about a stop, we don't go down the two stops. So we have a 14 uh, uh, stop dynamic range with Canon Log 3. And the bottom of it is very similar to Canon Log, the original Canon Log which a lot of people are familiar with. So people, we made this to make grading easy for those who don't want complex grading, who don't want to get into the issues of fighting the noise. And also that smear that we had, which if you put a very high highlight on one side, it will create a smear going across. That is a phenomenon of all CMOS, to different degrees depending on the design. But when we opened up the bottom end, we exposed that. So now we have introduced some processing that minimizes that. We reduce that by about 4 dB, which gets it pretty well subjectively invisible for most situations. Not all, but for most. People have seen a, a significant improvement. So they're the two big things that we've done. We've kept the Canon Log 2 as is for those who want that deep end. The Canon Log 3 for people who don't need that and want to do television shooting. And then we've added a couple more things in the upgrade. We've uh, put in focus guide for our primed. Uh, that's where we signal in the viewfinder when you've hit focus using the sensing of the, the, DA, the dual pixels in the image sensor. Uh, we've made a dual pixel uh, autofocus work with our Cine servo lens and also with the new Cine uh, uh, compact servo lens. So these are, I think, the primary improvements that we have in the C300 Mark II. Okay, so just to, to understand it correctly, with C-Log3, have you further um, pulled up the dark areas uh, of the sensor we, or well, we've pushed it down? No, we've lifted it up, so we're not down in that noise that you are down in with Canon Log3, 2, sorry, Canon Log2. 
yeah, but it's still it's still letting you go further down than the original C300 with the Canon log. So it's still a, an important 14 stops dynamic range, and the noise is very well behaved. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned you have also changed processing slightly. Yes, uh, that's part of the firmware, and that's that's I, I don't know the details of that. That's the engineers did that. They did some processing okay. uh, changes there, and that uh, that firmware upgrade will be made available to everybody about July. So anybody bought a C300 Mark II last year would be able to uh, get that upgrade if they wish. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, can you already tell us uh, where you're going next in terms of sensor design? Or maybe you could just tell us where you're seeing the future with sensor design. Well, uh, we're sort of showing that here with the 8K. Uh, that's where we're, we, it's a technology show. These are not products, but it is showing that we have developed a super 35 millimeter 8K image sensor and we're showing the image quality up there. So that gives you a, a blueprint, if you will, of where, where we would see the long term in cinematography. I mean, we're, we're hearing about 5K and 6K and 8K, so we said, well, 8K is a standard, we may as well jump on that and develop around that. We see 8K being definitely in cinema for some. Um, we don't see it in the living room, we don't think television is going to be bothered with 8K, we can't even get our broadcasters to move yet in the United States on 4K. So 4K is going to have a long life. Then perhaps 8K way downstream. But in the interim, we see some very important businesses for 8K, and that is any large venue, large screens, and this can be theme parks, rides, uh, museums, command and control systems, digital, large digital cinemas. There are many, many businesses. Digital signage has been a, a very brisk one. That's, uh, and we think 8K is going to have quite a role to play there. And that's why we want to have all of the production equipment so people can produce 8K material. So it's a lens, it's a camera image sensors, processing, recording, and display. And we're showing all of these here, just to give people a taste of what we're working on. Okay, man. Usually, um, you know, the industry says, okay, 8K is reserved for the high-end stuff. But eventually, I think users will pick it up at some point and start to shoot 8K. I mean, the question is when. Um, is there a limitation in terms of 8K sensors, like uh, for example in, when it comes to low light because the pixels are small or something yes, like that? Yes, there is. That's one of the things we're working on. That this, this camera would not have the sensitivity of C300 Mark II. <coughs> so that's an area we're working on. But it is, it's still a question that the consumers today are still not seeing 4K because the screen sizes are not even close to being big enough to give you the wow factor of 4K. It's all about screen size and viewing distance. So we think there's a, a big learning curve in, in 4K in the home. And it's going to be very interesting to see what the consumer electronic manufacturers do there. 84 inch is probably the popular big size. And at nine feet away, you don't see 4K. But you see beautiful HD, and the upscaling in these are very good. So I think 4K will march slowly and steadily. But 8K, which is four times more resolution, you've got to say, how could that possibly have a, a place in the living room? <laughs> the screen size is just huge. But any other application where large screens are, I think 8K is, I think, going to be very popular. Okay. Well, thank you again, Larry, and I uh, see you next year. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Sebastian, Bye. very much.